عليه وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا As we start this day, subhanAllah, just a few reflections of the beauty of it. Number one, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to witness this day of Arafah, for allowing us to be alive for another one of his blessings. in shakartum azidannakum. If you're grateful, I will increase you. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to be alive on this day and to be in the masjid for Salat al-Fajr on this day. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept on our behalf, a hajj bi'idnanahi ta'ala for those that will stay until salat al-duha, remembering Allah Azza wa on this day. And we also reflect on His limitless mercy. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is not limited to a time or to a place or to a generation or to one specific group of people, but it is constant and ongoing. And every single year, this is the day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees more people from hellfire than any other day of the year. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He write us down today amongst al utaqa, amongst those who are freed from the hellfire. You have to think of it in this way that as there's a scroll that goes out at the end of this day, who made the list of those that are freed from the hellfire? How badly do you want your name to be on that list of someone who's freed from the hellfire? SubhanAllah, at the end of Ramadan, in those last 10 nights, Allahumma inna ka'afu wa tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are the forgiver. You love to forgive, so forgive me. And here you have a day that is known, ma'loom. There's no, there's no question today is the day of Arafah. And you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon you and to forgive you, knowing that today is the day that more people will be forgiven than any other day. And the Prophet said, Udur Allahu antum muqinuna. With ijaba, call upon Allah and you are certain of the response. So when you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness today, be certain in the response that bidnanahi ta'ala, He will forgive you so long as you're sincere in that ask. I wanted to just reflect for a bit on that concept of arafah, of coming to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this idea of coming to know, becoming more aware. Today is a day that you should spend becoming a little bit more intimate with Allah Azza wa in your dua and getting to know Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And this idea of getting to know Allah Azza wa and the implications of that right away. One of the implications that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala mentions of forgetting forgetting him, la takunu kalladhina nasullah fa ansahum anfusahum. If you forget Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, he causes you to forget yourself. If you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also causes you to remember yourself. If you get to know Allah azza wa jal better, then you get to know yourself better as well by necessity. And the goal or the gift of this day of fasting in particular, that you're forgiven for two years of sins. Some of those sins you don't even realize you committed. Some of those sins, we did not even count as sins because of how normalized they've become, because of how normal they've become, because of how usual and repeated they've become. And you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you what you've already put forth and what you will put forth a previous year, uh, upcoming year, what you know and what you don't know, what is public and what is private, what is major by your estimation and what is minor by your estimation. And that idea that I don't even know the amount of sins I've accumulated of the past year, and I don't know the amount of sins, even if they are unintentional, that I will accumulate next year. But Allah Azza wa Jal is merciful enough to forgive all of that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this concept in the Quran, فَاعْتَرَفْنَا بِذُنُوبِنَا We have come to know our sins. Now some people will come to know their sins on the Day of Judgment. But the Prophet said, at the essence of tawbah, at the essence of your repentance, al-nadm, al-nadmu tawbah. Your repentance is based on your remorse, is based on your regret. The more that you come to know Allah Azza wa Jal, the more that you come to regret your shortcomings in regards to Him. And Ramadan was an exercise in many ways of getting to know the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of becoming more appreciative and more grateful of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you take for granted. And that kind of leads you to this place. Abu'u laka bi ni'matika wa abu'u laka bi 
I admit to you your blessings upon me, and I admit to you my shortcomings in repaying those blessings. I admit to you my sins. The sins that I don't even know that I've done. I admit to you, Ya Allah, that I'm sinning constantly, even if I'm not recognizing it. I admit to you, O oh Allah, that I am sinning on such a regular basis that sometimes there are accumulations. And my heart becomes fogged at times. Sometimes I feel the effect of that. Sometimes I'm not, I'm not as spiritually infused as I should be. And I know that at the end of the day, there are stains and there are accumulations. There's plaque buildup, right, in terms of sin. And you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove all of that. The only reminder that I want to give you today, bidnillahi ta'ala, is that as you're going about your day, bidnillah, alhamdulillah, you're in a state of sliyam, you're in a state of fasting, you're in a state of already uh, being pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by your very being in a state of fasting, inshallah ta'ala, is to try to find personal moments where you actually try to recount and you try to put forth a sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the goal of today is forgiveness. The goal of today is forgiveness. I know we've got our long dua lists and I tell people this when we're actually at the place of Arafah. And Arafah is makan and zaman, it's place and it's time. And in our situation, we're in the time of Arafah. Don't just bring forth your wish list with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure that the cover page is asking Allah for forgiveness. Everything else is secondary. Everything else that you're going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now part of that husn al in Allah is that Allah can do more than just forgive you today. Allah can do more than just forgive you today. But the main thing you want to happen once Salat al-Maghrib comes in is that you're forgiven bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. So make use inshaAllah ta'ala of that as your primary dua. Ask Allah to forgive you and then be confident in his forgiveness bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. And as you go about your day, do not knowingly commit sin on a day in which you are asking Allah to forgive you for the sins even that were done unknowingly. So be very, very careful today, as you should be every day, to not spoil it with a joke, with a conversation, with a glance, as much as you can. Don't knowingly commit sins. You're asking Allah to forgive you for the knowing and the unknowing today. Keep yourself involved in dhikr, even as you move from place to place. The best thing that the Prophet said, and he said, I and all of the Prophets have said is, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. As you are walking around today, as you're going from place to place, just keep repeating that dhikr bidnillah. And then allocate some moments that are between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you really try to get to know Allah azza wa jalla, where you really try to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, inshaAllah ta'ala, can move yourself to a place of acknowledgement of all the times that you've fallen short. Maybe you made some promises after Ramadan that you would be a certain way and you haven't, you haven't been able to make, make good on those promises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You had intentions maybe. Admit those to Allah azza wa jal today. Admit those shortcomings to Allah. Maybe you had Qur'an goals, dhikr goals. Maybe you promised at least to yourself that you would you know, start committing a certain good deed. Admit that shortcoming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day and try to find some personal moments. And the best of the day of Arafah as Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, narrates it's to him, not to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the best part of the day is the last part of the day bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. And so if you can allocate that asr to maghrib, inshaAllah ta'ala, that last hour of the day of Arafah, even if you just recite athkar al masa, you recite the evening remembrances, but some moment of personal dua, inshaAllah ta'ala, make use of the last part of the day, especially of the day of Arafah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have good endings and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this good beginning to be a sign of his acceptance for us for this day and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all of our shortcomings may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of the people that have gone to Hajj today that he grant them everything that they asked Allah for may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an answer to all of our du'as and at the chief of all of that is his forgiveness we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness for all of us the public and the private, the previous and that which is to come, the major and the minor, 
that which we've done knowingly and that which we do unknowingly. Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.